Welcome back to Dollars and Cents, where we help you make sense out of all of life's decisions involving your investment dollars. As you know, Joel is out this week. Christina and I are stepping in as your guest host. Christina was going through some things that are going to be changing 2023 for the IRS and the tax codes and let you kind of give us a few more of those. And then if you'd like, we'll switch over to Social Security, one of my favorite subjects. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Um, so the last section I had was a little bit of specialty tax rules. Um, so these are not situations that are necessarily going to apply to everyone. Um, however, some people may be able to take advantage of them. The first is the annual gift um exclusion. Um, that has gone up $1,000 for 2023. So that brings it to $17,000 uh, per year. So this is the amount that you're allowed to gift to an individual and the transaction will be tax free on both sides. So the person giving the money doesn't have to pay taxes on it and the person receiving the money doesn't have to pay taxes on it. This is a strategy we see um, some of our retirees use um, if they possibly want to give some of their beneficiaries some extra money before they pass instead of, you know, waiting in, until they're deceased. Maybe they can get some enjoyment out of it earlier on in life. Um, next is the estate tax um, exclusion. Um, so that has gone up almost a million dollars to $13,000, which is quite surprising. This has been a highly um, discussed issue this year um, about decreasing the amount or changing the way that works. So um, they did, in fact, go ahead and raise that for 2023. As of now, obviously, all of these are subject to change whenever I kind of feel like it. Um, the <laughs> adoption <laughs> credit has gone up uh, for qualified expenses, $1,000. So that brings it to $15,950. And then also the foreign earned income credit um, for those who work overseas but still may be based in the U.S. Um, has gone up about $8,000 to $120,000. So as you see, we see a lot of these figures adjusted, maybe a little bit more than usual um, due to the inflation that we're experiencing. And um, as well, we've seen Social Security um, be adjusted for inflation. For 2023, the expected amount is about uh, just a little under 9%. Um, so we're, you know, I don't recall Social Security being adjusted that much oh, um, in, in you know, I guess, the recent past. Yeah. Sure. No, Social Security has been um, always lagging as far as cost of living adjustments. Last year, got they, they bumped it up to about 6%, which was a, a big number. Mm -hmm. hadn't, ha hadn't been like that since the 1980s. And then, uh, as we've mentioned before, in the last month, uh, the government has decided that the cost of living adjustments is now going to be 8.7% going into 2023. Uh, if you add those two up, that's about a 15% increase in income coming from Social Security, which that income does get applied directly to your, your tax statement, right? Yeah, absolutely. It'd be nice if we, we all got an increase like that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Garrett was talking about, oh, go talk to your boss about you know <laughs> inflation. And I was like, slow that down. That's not really what we want to be uh, chatting about at this point. But yeah, it's, it's so important that uh, people are, are aware of the changes coming up, be it Social Security or taxes. And, and I think it's just a great emphasis on the fact that talk to somebody that knows what's going on. Because with all those different caveats you're talking about, you can't just on your own do your normal 1040 and, and take advantage of some of the things or be aware of everything that's moving on, uh, especially with Social Security. As more and more people are taking Social Security and that income comes in, it is possibly going to bump you up to a different tax bracket. You need to know how to handle that. Are there some other things you can do to offset? I think you got to work in your adjusted gross income. So it's not just black and white. Using your tax professional is certainly going to help. Um, so on Social Security, let's talk about some other things that are going to change in 2023. So we know we had a 5.9% increase two years ago. Going into 23, we're going to have the 8.7, about a 15% increase. You'll see that in your first check going into January 2023. Even if you haven't started to collect Social Security yet, if you start looking at your estimate statements, and again, I can't emphasize enough about going to ssa.gov, set up your online account, you'll see your estimated Social Security, even if you're 60 right now, you don't think you're going to take Social Security for another 10 years. The estimates will show the cost of living adjustment in your predicted payout. So even though you're not collecting Social Security, you will also get the advantage of the cost of living adjustment. Social Security is funded by a couple things. They do have their large $2.5 trillion 
bond portfolio, the interest off that helps to fund some of the benefits people get. It also, as you many people know, if you have a job, they're taking, they're taxing some of your income on each person, 7.65%. Employer kicks in another 7.65. That number is the same, but the amount that they're going to tax has gone up. Last year was 147,000 going into 2023. The amount will be 160,200. If you make less than 147, you won't notice a difference. But if you make more than 147,000 dollars, you'll see a little bit more of your income taken away and, and, and applied to Social Security. We appreciate that. People like myself who are closer to retirement, you're you're doing me a favor. But um, keep that in mind. There's always been a banter, also, and, and President Biden likes to talk about maybe having an extra layer, people that make 400000 or 500000 might kick a little bit more. But as it stands right now, it is capped at one sixty. So if you're making more than 160000 and have been for a period of time, you won't even really notice much of a difference. Um, same thing, Christina mentioned a couple of minutes ago about the uh, earnings limitation. So if you are under full retirement age, which will be if you're born in 1960 or later, that puts you at 67. If you're born... In the 55 to 59, it's 66 in a couple of months and so on and so forth. But the majority of people in the next few years as they move along, their full retirement age is going to be age 67. That's a, a lot of people are thinking about taking retirement or, or working part-time or collecting Social Security. You do want to be careful about how much you make in addition to your Social Security because it could be reduced, as Christina mentioned, some of the numbers. For next year, it'll be 21240 If you're under full retirement age and you make more than that, in your outside job, Social Security will pair off about a dollar for every two. If you, uh, by the time you hit full retirement age, so let's just say you're born 1960 or later, at that point, if you, that year that you turn full retirement age, you can make up to about 56000 that increased. And then the month you turn full retirement age, so if your full retirement age was 66 in 10 months, at that point you can earn unlimited income and not have Social Security reduce at all. So just keep that in mind as you're making your decisions. A lot of people think, well, you know, Social Security, I'm not sure how long I'm going to be around. I'm going to start as early as I can. And they end up giving a lot of it back. And yeah, you want to keep in mind that once you apply for Social Security and you start collecting benefits, that's, you've locked in that number. Other than maybe the cost of living adjustments we were talking about, right. that's your number. So don't get confused and think, well, every year it goes up automatically. That's only the cost of living adjustment. So don't start Social Security and then have it be reduced in half, and then you're paying the price for a long period of time. Yeah, that's that's quite a steep penalty if you retire early and then make more than the allotted earned income. I mean, fifty percent of that is is fifty percent of the overage that right. is 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 quite substantial. Right. I mean, you could end up, you know, if you run the numbers, you could say, well, yeah, I'm not going to make that much. I'm just going to make a forty thousand dollar job, and you'll find that you'll end up maybe getting one third of what you would have gotten from Social Security. Uh, over that gap. So you know, think it through. Yeah, I think that's one of the things we, we talk to clients about too, and make sure um, they're educated on knowing the decisions between right, retiring early and what that means income wise. And maybe they, they work less than they anticipated just so they're not receiving that penalty. Correct. I mean, that's a good point. You, you just want to run the numbers, give us a call. We can help you kind of do some estimates. The, I thought I'd share some of the popular ages when people are actually applying for Social Security. Uh, you would think 62 would be the number one, but that's really that's the, the second most popular time. And think of it in terms of if, you're, if people are going to start collecting Social Security, they're typically looking for a little bit more. The, the, the number one age where people are applying for Social Security is around full retirement age. Just based on what you and I were discussing, you're not going to be limited to your income. You will have gotten higher benefits than if you started at 62. 62 is probably the number two choice for people to start collecting benefits. And that's typically somebody who's like, look, you know, I'm, I'm out of work. I'm not going to be working. I'm not worried about the, the estimates. And then, of course, number three would be full retirement age plus, which would get you to 68, 69, and 70. So just some fun facts to know there. We've got other things we can share on Social Security. Always feel free to give me a call. You are listening to Dollars and Cents. Here in Central Florida. If you heard something you like, give us a call. We do have live people answering the phone, 409 407 629 6477. Keep in mind, we also do not have account minimums. We want everybody to get a chance to have a successful financial plan. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Talk to you soon.